Okay, let me answer some questions about my shaper or shapers in general. Shapers are router tables on steroids. They do everything that a router table can do and a whole lot more. Most shapers will come with a few different sizes of spindle and you can also get the collets for router bits. So any of the router bits that I use on my router table, I can also use in my shaper. I have a quarter inch and a half inch shank, so really any of the bits that I can use can go in there. And on this one, I have a one and a quarter inch spindle and a three quarter inch spindle. So I can use cutters that have the smaller three quarter inch hole or the larger one and a quarter inch hole. And once you step up to a shaper, there's a whole range of cutters that you can use that you won't ever get with a router table. Router can only spin, so you're, you're gonna have these circular looking bits and they just spin around and all you can do is run wood over it or beside it to create your profiles. By contrast, a shaper, you've got all different kinds of shapes and sizes and profiles and I'm just building up my stock of those now. Profile shapers, TNG shapers, straight shapers like this, groove cutters, blue line shapers. There's a whole range of cutters. Now that you've got this bit spinning around, instead of just in a circle up and down, you can do a whole bunch of different kinds of things. And the adjustability on these tables is also incredible, as well as the speed. Let me show you. So these fences, both front and back, will move back and forth so that you can adjust for the width and the diameter and the position of your cutter or your, or your blade. Now both sides of this fence have independent adjustment so that you can adjust each fence so your board travels through smoothly. So for example, let's say you were cutting a radius edge here and by the time it came out the other side, you had taken off a millimeter or two on the face of the board. You can loosen this off and adjust it out two millimeters so that by the time the board travels all the way through, it meets up with a flush fence on the other side and you don't get any board wobble. And so you'll loosen this off right here. Then this knob is for micro adjustment so you can get it set just perfect. Now under here is the height adjustment, which makes your blade go up and down, and you also have a lock in the middle that once you've found the position you want to be in, you can lock it so it won't go anywhere. And you have a digital readout on this one that'll tell you how high up or how low you are. It has inches or millimeters, and you can zero it out whenever you want to help you find the position you're looking for. The blade can also go forward and reverse. So right now I have it set in reverse so the blade spins this way and I can feed the material through. There's times where the direction of the grain in the board might cause the wood to want to splinter and break out. And in that case, you can take your bit or blade off, flip it over, and then change the direction so that you're cutting from the other side so you get the cleanest cut possible. Now something else unique about these is under here, you have different speeds. So you have 5,000, 7,000, and 10,000 RPM and you, you adjust the speed by moving that belt up and down. This will loosen the motor off, and then the belt is loose, and you can change your speeds and get back to work. You'll also see on each one of these cutters, it will tell you right here the max RPM. So this is max 12,000 RPM. This one here says max 7,000 RPM. So on each one of your bits, it's gonna tell you how fast you can go with it or not. Now when it's time to change your bit or your cutter or your blade, you have to go underneath and lock the spindle so that it doesn't move. Right there. And you take this bolt out of the top. And then you've got all these spacers. And the reason that you have all these spacers is there's a bunch of cutters that are actually really tall, like some of the glue line cutters or the edge cutters or the profile sanders and stuff. And they're really big. And so you have all these different size spacers so that you can accommodate those larger cutters. And then whatever cutter you're cutting, you can go and put that one on. And given that this one was thicker than the one that I just took off, I'll use a different set of spacers. And what you want to do is put the right amount of spacers on right until the point where this one is just above the shaft here. And then this bolt and washer come down and suck it all together and hold that in place. Now when you want to change to a different spindle, you've got to come and loosen off this nut on the top. And also inside here on the bottom of the spindle is a long shaft that you have to loosen off and that comes out. So it's actually held down from the top and the bottom to keep it safe. And then we can come from the top and take that all the way out. So you can see in the bottom of this, this is where this shaft goes in and holds it from the bottom. And then this one snugs it down on top. So now we'd put that one back on, basically do everything in reverse. Put that on the top, put the shaft in through the bottom and thread it in and then tighten it all down. Now you also have on these the ability to, uh, to take out these plates for the size of the bit that you're using. And there's a few different ones that go in. 
And basically, you can adjust your table base here to have as much as possible depending on the cutter that you're using and the way that you're cutting. Now, the whole fence is adjusted back and forth by loosening those two off and then the, using this knob to go back and forth. And then where possible, there's also a dust shield and sort of a protection shield that goes on the front. And that's adjustable up and down and back and forth so you can get the most amount of protection as possible. And it helps to get the most amount of dust to suck out the dust collection. On the back here, you'll see there's two dust collection ports, one up top and actually one down below. And it does a really good job at sucking the majority of it away. Now, one of the major differences between routers and shapers is that routers spin their bits really, really, really fast, much faster than a shaper, but the shapers have way more torque. So a router or a router table is good for removing uh, little bits of material, little profiles and things like that. And you can only take out or take off a little bit of material at a time before the router will bog down. So a router is kind of like a, a noisy cricket, a snappy little chihuahua. They're, they're great, they do the job for what they're doing, but when you want to remove a lot of material and hog things out and cut things out and do repeat setups and stuff like that, the, the torque and the power of the shaper, as you've seen from some of my videos, removes a ton of material really quickly and efficiently and with a really clean finish. So if you're only doing kind of fine work and, and small radiuses and profiles and a little bit of mortising, then a router table is fine or, or a router. I use them quite a lot. But if you're doing some of the heavier work and you're trenching things out or hogging out material or doing big mortising cuts or lock miter joints and things like that, then, then a shaper's the way to go because it's got a ton of flexibility and can do a lot more stuff. And the, the amount of cutters that you can get in the profiles is way more than you could get for your router table.